I built this fuel injector test bench and filled it with fluid for $59.13. I bought the minimum amount of stuff and used as much scrap and parts I had laying around. I'm going to go over how I built it and show how it works at the end of the video. I'd wanted one of these test benches like this uh, for quite a while. I recently bought some injectors and these injectors right here and a regulator that I wanted to test. I decided to build this mainly to test these uh, injectors and the regulator and I'll be able to use it to test other stuff in the future. I didn't realize how universal this test bench was going to be. I mostly built it to test the injectors but then I realized I can test the regulators, fuel pumps, fuel pressure. I can do a lot of things with this. I can also test uh, the internal pump like this I have right now and I can test external fuel pumps. If you count the cost it took me to make this, I'm in way ahead over actually buying a unit, but it makes buying a unit a pretty good option considering how much time I put into this. But I'm not sure if you're gonna get all the options that I have for hooking up different fuel pumps and everything or replacement parts. Uh, if I need to replace anything on this, it's pretty simple. I can modify it pretty easily. So to start, I needed a base like this to hold the injectors. I had a random 2003 4.6 truck intake manifold laying around. It had some damage to the water jacket and I had no real use for it. So it was a good candidate to use for the, this base right here. I was going to use the fuel rail from the intake manifold that I got this piece off of, but the fuel rail was rusted inside and I didn't want to use it. So here's the other side of the intake manifold and you can see right here where my thumb is at. That's where the injector bracket would normally bolt up to. And then you can see the bosses where the injectors go in at. So I pretty much just cut that bottom off and then that's what you're seeing in here. So here's the fuel rail from the truck. You can see it would normally bolt in about right here. The problem with this one, besides this one being rusted and pretty cruddy inside, I didn't want to use it is the adjustability of it was going to be kind of hard. Here's the other side of the fuel rail. You can see this one has the regulator built in and then the inlets and outs that go to the tank. And then here's how the hose looks like that goes to the other side of the rail. And these are basically just 3 8 barb. Here you can see an example of it without the hose on it. So this just connected to the other side of the fuel rail. So here's the fuel rail I ended up using. This is from a, a 95 Lincoln Mark 8 with a 4.64 valve. This one, the bolt configuration actually goes down. So I think it made this setup a little bit better. And then this fuel rail is cleaner inside. It has the same 3.8 barb fittings right here, but they're just uh, staggered a little different. And then right here is the port to uh, test the fuel pressure at. I was testing these uh, newer, shorter style injectors, so the fuel rail actually needed to go down further than normal. So doing it this way ended up working pretty good as well. So Ford has a few different types of injectors, short, long, fat, um, but they basically have two links. Here's like a longer style one and here's a shorter style one. And I'm able to stack washers to make up for the height. So like I said earlier, I went ahead and cut this plastic off the manifold to give me the part to put the injectors in. And then I got a piece of slotted angle iron, like this one. This is the, that's what's in the back that's painted blue. So I went ahead and bolted this down first to the slotted angle iron. And then later I ended up making these studs that weld from the bottom so only have to work from the top and then I notched the angle iron in here because the angle iron sticks out a little bit past where the jars would go in so I notched the angle iron so the jars can fit in exactly where they need to go and then like I said I made these custom adapters right here that make up for the offset of where the fuel rail normally bolts up so it's just a small piece of plate steel that bolts up here and then I stack the washers in the back or I like this configuration quite a bit because it pulls straight down on it now these glass bottles right here I picked up for $4 for the whole set, a dollar a piece at a local secondhand store. And then once I had the top part done, I basically sat the bottle in place after it was notched and then I knew the height I needed. So then I went ahead and built the frame around that. I took this old piece of shelf that I'd got for free on the side of the road and I cut the 90s out of it. And I used that for some pieces in the back that'll be like a back support for the bottle and then I went ahead and took an old tape measure that I didn't need and I cut it up and I hot glued that in for my measurements and then I used this piece of scrap metal and some random hardware and made like a little retaining bar so the jars couldn't fall out easy. I can get replacements of these jars online maybe for 10 bucks a pop but the last thing I want to do is break one of these jars because it's built around it. You could get some better containers with actual measurements on it um, but that again I was just trying to keep the cost down as much as possible. I didn't mind having to put in the work. For the fluid reservoir I used a big pickle jar and I took a clamp and I screwed it into the frame 
and then put a piece of heater hose around it to cushion it. Then I used a Simpson strong tie, the bracket for bolting wood and framing and uh, stuff like that. And I modified it to act like a little shelf to hold the bottle. Then I glued some felt to that and then stapled some felt up here by the wood. So then it has some cushion all the way around for the bottle. I drilled three holes in the lid, one for the fuel out, one for the fuel in that also holds the uh, wiring for the fuel pump. And then this third hole is basically I wanted a vent but I also needed a spot to uh, pour the liquid back in once it's collected. So I did this little vent hole slash uh, funnel. I had this little AN bulkhead and all these grommets I had just laying around also. So this is the regulator I wanted to test. I got that bolted up. And then after, you know, I got all this mounted, pretty much all that was left to do was plumb it and uh, finish the wiring and everything. I used about three feet of fuel line, which cost me $8.21. I had a gift card from O'Reilly's where you spend $10, you get uh, $5 off. There's some AN fittings that are going to stay with the regulator, but there's about five other AN fittings counting the, these ends and the bulkhead and stuff like that. Again, I had all this stuff laying around, but you could easily do this with just some more hose and just hose clamps for everything. And again, this regulator is not going to stay on here. You could hard plumb this without the regulator. But for my case, more than likely these fittings are going to stay on, but this could all just be hose clamp and set up that way. I connected to the fuel rail right here with a clamp tight tool. It's in place of a hose clamp. You can use wire and uh, clamp it on. It works pretty good. I'm just trying to get some more practice with it, but again, could have just used uh, hose clamps right there. For the pump, I didn't have the main wire harness, so I just uh, wired them on separately with a couple uh, wire ends and then made the leads come out together. I got this injector tester off of Amazon for $23.53. I could have possibly got one for cheaper, but it also comes with attachments to uh, hook up spray cans to the injectors. I've seen some examples where people will make versions of this off a circuit board or with a turn signal flasher, but I figured this was the best route for me to go because it'll pulse like a car and it, I'm not gonna have to spend a bunch of extra time and money building something from scratch. At least for this, I feel like I could have spent more than $20 uh, hand building a circuit board. I can always upgrade this part later too if I want, because currently I can only do the two injectors uh, at a time, which isn't a big deal, but uh, it'd be nice to be able to upgrade this later to do four. And then I didn't like the ends that came on this, so I bought these ends to fit my fuel injector on Amazon for $3.76. Um, I could have taken some from a scrap wire harness I had, but it was too buried uh, in storage right now, so this was the best option. Now to power all this, I have this uh, scrap power supply from a computer that's been modified to just be able to turn on and uh, power 12 volt parts. And I've had this around uh, to test uh, parts for a while, so I'm gonna use this to power up the pump and the fuel injector tester. Then the liquid I'm using is mineral spirits. I talked to a tech at Aeromotive, and he said this is what they use to test their fuel pumps in-house. A lot of people recommend this online too. It has a higher flash point than gasoline, so it's a lot safer alternative than running uh, gasoline through this. Uh, le way less of a fire risk. Unfortunately, I'm in California and all the versions they sell of this are clean like uh, green versions, and I wasn't sure how well that would work. So luckily I was able to get the straight up mineral spirits uh, through Amazon for 1963. So, and if you think about it, when you buy a test bench online that's already pre-made, you're still gonna have to buy uh, fluid like this as well. All right, so I'm gonna get this all hooked up and power it on and just show you how it works. Okay, so first we're gonna power it on. I got the power supply here. I just hit the on off switch on it and then uh, we're gonna test the pressure and then we can go ahead and run it through the pace on uh, this injector testing really quick. And this is just a standard fuel pressure tester and I'm having the runoff go into the funnel. So we'll just do this really quick to verify the pressure. Okay, you can hear it come on. And see it's at 40 we'll dump some fluid it goes to 40 we'll dump fluid again goes to 40 so i'm going to go ahead and uh, remove this now and then uh, finish the rest of the test so with the pressure tester hooked up i could have adjusted the regulator but i know the regulator works and i already adjusted it to roughly 40 psi so that's where we're at right now then i have the tester hooked up uh, to these two injectors right here we're going to turn it back on and run it through its paces this is supposed to have four modes but this thing's like screwed up and I forgot to contact them in enough time, but the modes don't even start till five. So it's like five, six, seven, and eight start the modes for this. So that does just a standard, you know, it's gonna like go for as long as I hold it. Let's do the next one. Does like a short burst. That one does a long burst. And then that one's continuous, so we don't want to run that one too long. When I was testing them, I was like just checking the spray pattern on like a standard burst. Then I go to the next one. 
and I would do like maybe 16 cycles of it. And if I would do one long burst in 16 cycles, it would consistently bring me to the one inch mark on my tape measure. And so I just did the same thing with all eight injectors, you know, tested it um, one short or yeah, one long burst and then 16 short bursts. And then uh, they all basically read uh, one inch. All the injectors I got were going about the same. So that was good. And then as you can see, when I, get fluid i can just take this out and then just pour it back in on oh, one thing to keep in mind too part of the original intake port touches the bottom of this so it can't build pressure in this it, it, the pressure comes out of the top here in the back so there's just a little bit of a opening where the intake uh, touches the that and i did have a problem here where the hot glue isn't holding the tape in the back anymore so i'm gonna probably have to put some epoxy on it to hold that um but besides that it's been working good i'll do a couple more shots try to get some up close stuff okay so here's a more up close look at the injectors uh spraying and again this is a or these injectors are a dual cone so they spray out uh two streams so that's just the short pulse here's the medium and here's the long and then the last one is just continuous if you have any more questions about it leave a comment here go to the website message me uh, go to my instagram desert rat racer it's a desert uh, underscore rat underscore racer uh, you can message me on there i could send you like pictures or answer any questions there easily as well uh, facebook again desert rat racer anything I'm, I'm glad to help answer any questions all right you guys have a good day bye